Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be updating you guys on the tropics as we have an imminent tropical threat about to impact the eastern United States. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that second tropical disturbance will eventually make its way to where it can impact the United States or the Caribbean, or do you think it's just going to die out at some point between now and then? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're just going to take a look at that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, for our first disturbance there about to impact the southeast, we have now a 60% chance of development uh, until it reaches the eastern seaboard potentially. And then for our second disturbance out there, we have a 20% chance over the next two days, although it has a lot longer than that before it's gonna be around any land. So it doesn't really matter too much. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move on to the five day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we get 10% increase here on this second disturbance. So the National Hurricane Center as of right now is kind of feeling so-so on this one. They've increased confidence a little bit, but still pretty skeptical. But for disturbance number one, we obviously have a 60% chance for five and two days because we're gonna see this one impacting the Southeast today. So that will not be during the five day outlook at all. Here's the satellite imagery for that disturbance offshore of the, the eastern seaboard. And as you can see, already we're seeing these little cells and, and little bands impact the southeast, especially South Carolina and Georgia at this point. So this, this video for me is a little bit late, although it is uh, 7 a.m. right now and I did wake up at 5 a.m. to start making this video. So I guess the only way around that would have been if I woke up at about 3 or uh, even earlier. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery for the second disturbance out there in the MDR or the middle of the Atlantic, basically. And this one has some nice structure to it. I do expect this one will have a long life, actually. And I do expect this one to develop as well. I have actually pretty good confidence in that at this point. Conditions seem pretty good out ahead of it. And, it, it, you know, whenever these storms start out in the MDR, they have so much time to get their act together. It just increases the odds just a bit, in my opinion, always when we see these storms starting out in the MDR. This one doesn't really have any shear or any dry air out ahead of it, so the sky is the limit, literally. This one could be a major tropical cyclone, that's why that has been in the thumbnail for two days. This one, it, there's no limit to how strong this one can get. We're heading into July, and this is when it becomes a little bit more realistic for some stronger tropical activity. We're going to be watching for that very closely as we head towards the month of August through the month of July. Things should start to get going. Uh, it's been insane these last few years how early we've gotten started with these hurricane seasons, multiple tropical cyclones before even the month of July uh, over the past probably like five hurricane seasons. Just absolutely crazy stuff, guys. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the European model's probability of tropical depression and probability of tropical storm for both of these individual systems. And then we're going to get right into the spaghetti model guidance, intensity guidance, uh, and even some of the impacts for the southeast storm at the very end of the video. So don't miss that. Total rainfall, total winds, things of that nature coming up at the very end. Now, here is our probability of tropical depression here off the southeast coast. And the European model says, hey, look, this one could become a tropical depression. There's an 80 to 90% chance of that, according to this model, and even a 90 to 100% chance of that in that darker red of that becoming a tropical depression before uh, day's end, before this one reaches landfall. So we will see how correct that is. This model does do some weird, weird things sometimes with its probability, but oftentimes it's very accurate. I've even seen this one show probability when the National Hurricane Center hasn't yet, and then this one ends up being right. So this model does have its moments for sure. That's that's one thing I know for certain. Now, probability of tropical storm for this one in the southeast is at about 0 to 10% chance. So that seems unlikely at this point, but there is the probability of a tropical depression forming, which is a little bit more than what we originally anticipated uh, as of yesterday. So this one does look a little bit more intense. And actually, when we look at the wind at the end of the video, it does seem like it will be more impactful as well than we originally thought yesterday also. Now here is the probability of tropical depression and you can see actually both storms on this on this kind of viewpoint we see here but mostly we want to focus on that one in the middle of the Atlantic and this one has an 80 to 90 percent chance of developing into at least a tropical depression over the next three days according to this model and probability of tropical storm is at about 30 to 40 percent chance there in those green shades so there is a 
pretty good chance that this one does become a tropical storm. I've actually seen some models trend at this one potentially becoming a hurricane eventually. So again, the sky is the limit with this one for sure, especially when it takes this track. Now that was the zero to three day outlook. Once we take a look at the one to four day outlook, which just give us one more day in addition, we get actually a 50 to 60% chance of tropical uh, storm development here uh, in the southern caribbean entering into the southern caribbean and there's even a little dot of 60 to 70 percent chance in there as well uh, the only thing with this is the european model does take it into the southern caribbean which does hinder the chance of this one developing obviously if it goes north of puerto rico north of the dominican republic there's a higher chance of this one developing way more favorable conditions up there that is pretty common uh, there is some models once we take a look at the spaghetti models later on that do take that one north of those regions giving it a better chance of becoming a stronger storm and potentially a united states impact eventually so these are all things we're going to want to be paying attention to now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for both of these storms obviously we pretty much know where that southeast one is headed pretty much directly west but we will take a look at that intensity guidance as well and then we're going to take a look at the invest 95l which is the one in the middle of the atlantic and we will get a lot more information on that one. And then again, at the end of the video, we'll take a look at total rainfall and total winds for that it's southeast uh, storm there. All right, now here is the spaghetti model guidance for that first storm, 96L. And I just wanted to show this quickly. The main reason is because after it reaches the East Coast, which will be likely right in between Georgia and South Carolina, it could basically go towards Tennessee and die out in the middle of the United States, or it could curve back towards the Northeast and then back into the ocean, which we have seen these storms reform in a type of track like this. And this could happen as soon as the next 96 hours. The biggest thing about this is that this could bring some rainfall to the Northeast. So we will be watching for that threat as well. Here's the intensity guidance according to the models. And as you can see, it is very close to tropical storm status. And over the next 12 hours, it will be. Uh, but it is going to drop off after it reaches land, obviously. There is one model that goes crazy with it and takes it towards a Category 1, but I highly doubt that will be the case because it'll be basically over uh, the Smoky Mountains by that point. So that's highly unlikely at this point. Actually, practically impossible, like under 1% chance, obviously. Now, as we take a look at that middle of Atlantic one here, we can see that this one, this is the GFS Ensemble model, takes it right in between. There is some that take it to the Southern Caribbean, but a lot of these go north of Puerto Rico or almost hit Puerto Rico, but north of Dominican Republic. The important thing here is Dominican Republic and Haiti, beautiful countries, by the way, the mountains are so beautiful, the tropical mountains, because you've seen, obviously, likely if you live in the United States, uh, our types of mountains, but to see like a tropical island, but then the mountainous landscape is so amazing. I actually haven't been to Dominican Republic. I don't think I've been to Haiti though. Very beautiful country, uh, especially just the wilderness there. Absolutely stunning. Now, those mountains are a lot taller than the ones in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico does have some mountains, but the ones in Dominican Republic and Haiti are a lot bigger. So usually when storms track over Puerto Rico, it doesn't destroy them quite like uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. Those, those mountains there actually destroy tropical systems, literally. Puerto Rico is a smaller country as well, so it would only impact portions of a storm, not the entire thing. Whereas Haiti and Dominican Republic is a lot wider so it's just more impactful to hindering these storms. That is important to note. Now, let's take a look at that Canadian ensemble model. And this one just says, hey, it can literally go anywhere. Uh, we, we see uh, one going towards Louisiana and Texas. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we have one way out to sea hitting the Atlantic coast of Canada. So there is just a wide variety of solutions here. Here is like all the individual models. And as you can see, these ones take it pretty much... Uh, a lot similar to the GFS Ensemble model here. We see a lot of them going kind of towards the Southern Caribbean, a couple hitting Dominican Republic, a couple hitting Puerto Rico, but then a lot of them going north of Puerto Rico, which again could mean a stronger storm. So there's a lot of solutions on the table. Here's the intensity guidance. And one thing's for sure, you'll notice almost all of these have this intensifying at least towards a tropical storm over the next 72 hours, likely. So that's the next three days. According to these, we will likely already have a tropical storm. The sky is the limit because we have two hitting hurricane status, one hitting category two status. That could increase over time. Here's those impacts. Like I said, total rainfall. If you're anywhere in the greens, you're under half an inch of rainfall. If you're in the blues, half an inch to an inch. And then the yellows is an inch plus. So this won't be any sort of major flooding by any means, uh, but that could be pretty impactful, especially one inches plus, And that could be more. Here's the total winds accumulated. So this is the maximum through the entire lifetime of the storm. 
and anywhere in the greens, you're at 34 uh, to about maybe 50 mile per hour wind gusts. So that is when we start to get, you know, pretty impactful with the winds. No major damage, but potentially some minor, you know, branches and tr and twigs down. Uh, more of a nuisance type event, but still impactful nevertheless. Even the lighter blues are a little bit impactful as well. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six still. Uh, there's a lot of question marks with that second disturbance, but I can't wait to track it with you guys over the next coming days. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think each of these individual storms will do? And James Marr said, I think the MDR one will become a tropical storm and the one that will impact the, so uh, the southern United States will become a tropical depression. Very, very interesting there. We will see if that comes true there by James Marr. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerler the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalasa, Cat Bite, Charles Dinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this patron end screen today, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and Cat Bite as well. That'll be located next to the subscribe button if you are interested in joining. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below. Those two things help out tremendously, more than you would ever know. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.